daughter. My name is Aya. And I am an educator here at the California Academy of Sciences. And today, I'm going to be taking an imaginary dive into the world of coral reefs. Hey, would you like to come with me? That's great! Okay, first, we'll need to put on our dive masks to help us see underwater. All right, you're gonna take the strap and put it over your head. Put yours on with me. Here we go. Nice and snug, looking good. Next, we're gonna put our snorkels in our mouths to help us breathe in the water. And then, on the count of three, we're gonna dive in together. Ready? Snorkels in. <gasps> oh, and one, two, three. <laughs> all these fish. So many colors and shapes. What colors do you see? And how about coral? Do you see anything you think could be a coral? Oh, I see some there growing on the rocks behind the fish. Some of them are branched and look like trees. Do you see anything that looks like a tree? Some of them look like broccoli to me. What shapes do you see in the coral reef? And look at this big coral over here. Let's swim over and take a look. Wow, this one is big and flat like a dinner plate. And do you see anything moving there on top? Yeah, each of those little moving creatures is a coral polyp, a tiny animal. They build a hard home around themselves, kind of like a shell. And together, they create huge coral reefs that give food and homes to all kinds of ocean animals. Let's zoom in even further to see one of those coral polyps up close. Are you ready? Wow! What an interesting animal. Does it remind you of anything? It reminds me of one of these. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Or perhaps like this? Does this look like a coral polyp to you? Maybe a little. It's a sea anemone. And corals and sea anemones actually have a lot in common. They're both soft, squishy animals with no bones. And they use really small stingers to catch teeny tiny animals that float in the water called plankton. Phew, you! You know, all of this swimming has made me hungry. How about you? Mm -hmm. If I was a coral polyp, I would use my tiny stinger to zap up some plankton for lunch. The tiny stingers that corals use to catch their prey are called nematocysts. Nematocyst. Can you say that with me? Let's try. Nematocyst. Good job. Now you try. That sounded great. Hey, why don't we take our coral nematocysts and zap up some plankton that we can feel floating by right now? I'm going to make my nematocyst look like this. Can you make a coral nematocyst? That looks really good. Okay, we're going to close our eyes and on the count of three, we'll zap up some plankton that we can feel floating on by. Ready? I can feel some plankton coming up now. One, two, three. Zap! <gasps> well, that was delicious. But you know what? 
I'm still hungry. How about you? Well, here in the tropical waters, where coral reefs grow, there really isn't very much plankton floating around at all. That's why those tropical waters are so crystal clear. There's really not very much food swimming around. So, zapping up plankton isn't the only way that coral reefs get their food. Let's zoom in again and take a look. Ready? Look, there's something very important living inside the coral polyp. It's an algae. And like plants, algae make their own food using energy from the sun. And these algae are generous. They make so much fruit, they can share a lot of it with the corals that they live in. So, corals will zap up plankton to snack on, but their main meals come from these generous algae. And it's good they get plenty of food because they've got important work to do. Coral reefs give homes or food to lots of ocean animals, like fish and sea turtles, and even sharks. Many animals that spend time in coral reefs swim to other parts of the world. And then they do their important jobs in those other places. They may become food for other animals, including humans. Have you ever eaten anything that comes from the ocean? Maybe like seaweed? Or like tuna fish? Tuna don't spend any time in coral reefs, but they might eat other fish that do. And when you think about it, everything on our planet Earth is connected, including us humans. And we have our important job to do as well, just like coral reefs. Scientists all over the world work hard to learn about coral reefs and protect them. And you and I can do our part too. We can keep our ocean clean and healthy. We can think of ways to create less waste that gets absorbed by the ocean. How can we burn less energy for cars and factories? How can we keep plastics out of our ocean? As young people growing up in the world, you will be the ones to answer questions like these. What are your ideas? Thank you for joining us today on our dive into the world of coral reefs. We at the California Academy of Sciences hope to see you again soon.